Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kick this video off discussing AMD, specifically some very exciting technology from AMD, which actually is for servers, but has some very intriguing possibilities when it comes to the client side of things. What am I talking about? Well, basically a project from AMD that they've been working on for some time now, which concerns stacked dies. And this project is known as Milan X. So rumors of this actually first started to really circulate when um, a forum member of Chip Hell by the name of Zoo, who's actually pretty accurate in general, uh, first kind of started to hint about this with a <laughs> photo of lasagna. We'll get back to that in a second. I promise that does actually have some bearing on things. And then this started to be picked up by others. And uh, also Patrick on Twitter, who again is pretty damn accurate, also mentioned Milan X. And yeah, so I have to confess to you guys, I kind of knew about uh, Milan X, but I was asked to not really say much. And to be honest, I didn't really do much digging because it's more on the data center side of things. So I was more interested in the client side and how it would affect things. But the TLDR is that, to my understanding anyway, it does actually encompass stacked chiplets. And I don't know how high they are. I don't know whether it's say a four or an eight stack or whatever, but I'm hearing that the performance of this is absolutely bonkers. Now, the conflicting information that I'm hearing is whether we're gonna actually see this at Computex, basically whether this is something that AMD are gonna show off or not. Some are stating that yes, it's certain that we will see it, and others are saying that probably not. And in fact, I'm even hearing from some that it's possibly not a product which will see the light of day. It may be a later iteration of the hardware based on, let's say, Zen 4, but we'll get into that again in a second. I know I keep putting things off, but it's because we've got a lot to talk about. But instead, I was told it could also be a proof of concept, but I'm personally leaning towards this not being the case, and it may be something that we're going to see at Computex. And again, a stack to die is kind of, I guess, the next logical step for AMD, kind of X3D, if you will. And I have to say that, you know, it, the problem with transitioning this to the client side is that obviously client, you know, has different um, kind of conditions and criteria, particularly when we're dealing with things such as power consumption, thermal envelopes and stuff like that. So cooling this could be a lot trickier than say a server where, well, let's say things such as noise are not such a big deal for the server market. I'm hearing that the performance of this is absolutely ridiculous simply because of the amount of onboard memory for this thing. I'm hearing it could be like a gigabyte or so, possibly more. But either way, the reality is that, of course, all of this is a rumor. And so apparently lasagna, <laughs> again, we're getting back to this. So lasagna possibly is kind of like the internal code name of this. And I'm also hearing that there could be later iterations as well, such as Genoa again, so it would be Genoa X. Now, I'm gonna be very interested to see what actually comes of this, because obviously AMD are not the only ones that are pursuing chiplets and kind of, you know, stack chips in general. Obviously, Intel have been doing a lot with, for example, their Foveros technology. And if you've been following along at all with the kind of high performance computing, um, GPUs from Intel, you'll know that, what was it, 47 tiles or something like that for their, was it 47? Something absolutely ridiculous, you know, because they've got compute tiles in there. I'm pretty sure that they've got tiles in there literally from your kitchen, you know, they've probably just pulled them off from the wall. It's, you know, it's actually kind of ridiculous to be honest. Um, it's obviously all of these companies are kind of approaching things differently to get around the constraints of, you know, manufacturing, you know, large processes. And the other benefit, of course, of creating chiplets, not only can you uh, help, well, kind of circumvent things such as the, uh, you know, slowing down of things such as Moore's Law, but also you can create very custom silicon, which is, again, something that's very important for AMD in the longer run. And I can't help but feel that it's gonna be a very exciting time, especially for things such as data centers. And eventually, of course, ideas of this technology do trickle their way down. I have to say that I don't know a whole a lot about Milan X and uh, 
And uh, do you know what? Frankly, I'm kind of waiting to see what's formally announced uh, by AMD uh, Computex, and then I can kind of start doing some digging. To be honest, I kind of knew about this just only recently, but um, yeah, it's it's very interesting to see what AMD are kind of working on. And it does also make me wonder what other sneaky projects that the company have kind <laughs> of in their labs. Um, one thing I can tell you all is that, you know, both NVIDIA and Intel in particular are really kind of, I don't know how to describe it, just kind of, um, I, I guess taking it back and very surprised. And I more mean like the actual engineers here on just how AMD are executing. I wouldn't say that AMD's execution is flawless. And if you look at them as a company as a whole, there are still weaknesses in their kind of marketing and lineup and stuff like that. But I do think AMD are doing a lot better. And clearly one of the big reasons for this is that AMD's R&D has increased significantly. You know, you can do just a quick Google on that yourself. You can see that the R&D budgets from AMD are basically increasing exponentially because obviously previously they were very much struggling. We can argue that Zen, it was, to be honest, it was kind of like a last, it was kind of like a last effort from AMD to be honest, to be competitive. Um, you know, you can even look back at their share price where at one point they were trading, what was it, under like $2 or something like that. And now, obviously, they've gone strength to strength. So AMD's execution is really on par at the moment. And if Milan X is accurate, and frankly, I believe it is because I've been told by multiple people that it's true. Although one of my sources actually had the name wrong. They told me it was X Milan, but it doesn't really matter. The, you know, the, the basics is that still... To my understanding, this is definitely real. The only confusion I've got is whether it's an actual product which is going to be released or whether it's more of a proof of concept slash kind of, you know, an internal thing that never sees the light of day. Personally, I do think it's a product, however, which will be shown off by AMD. And speaking of things which are gonna be shown off by AMD, just another quickie. Yep, I'm giving you guys another quickie. Basically, FSR is looking almost certain to be shown off very soon and possibly at Computex. I'm hearing that journalists are most likely going to be briefed soon as well. And this is going to have some very interesting ramifications in graphics. You know, we've covered FSR multiple times at this point. I even had an interview with Frank Azer and we were kind of discussing what AMD's plans are for an open ecosystem. And I just keep going back to how I think that NVIDIA are gonna counter FSR. And obviously, you know, the release of the RTX 3080 Ti, for example, and 3070 Ti, and AMD's announcement of FSR is not a coincidence. Obviously, each of them are trying to one-up the other in terms of like announcements. And I do think that AMD's software side of things um, not having an upsampling solution has been definitely a, re a really big weak point. I know even outside of the shortages of hardware, quite a few people I know have been kind of looking at the RX 6000 series and, you know, my friends are like, I really want this card, but it's got no upsampling tech. When's it going to be ready? When's it going to be ready? <laughs> and the irony is a couple of them even had the opportunity to buy the card and just let it slip by their fingers because there was no FSR. And now, yeah, well, we know how the market is. But again, getting back to the point, guys, the reality is that FSR is looking to be really good. I've discussed the performance and everything else in multiple exclusives, but just a Cliff Notes version, we're looking at up to 200% performance increase. So that's pretty significant. And yeah, it does need to be implemented by a developer, but it does seem like it's not limited to RDNA. So it's not going to be like, oh, you need an RX 6000 series card. It could even work on something like an RX 480 for sake of argument. And moving on to mesh shaders. I've got a question for you. What is a computer generated scene? It is a miserable little pile of triangles. Actually, a lot of triangles if we use mesh shading. And there's a very interesting thing from NVIDIA themselves where a developer, we'll get into specifics in a moment of course, has actually been debuting their work with mesh shaders. And the results on an RTX 3060 Ti no less, well, they are nothing short of mind blowing. 1.8 billion triangles. That is how many triangles that we can see. And this allows Justice MMO to run at 4K 60 FPS. Again, this is on an RTX 3060 Ti, which 
I'm sure you'll agree it's very impressive. Now, the developer in question is NetEase, and NVIDIA themselves actually asked them multiple questions. What are you trying to achieve by adding mesh shading to justice, was the question. Our first thought is to render some highly detailed models, which we need insane number of triangles. Soon we found out we can combine mesh shaders with auto-generated LODs, LODs, to achieve almost only resolution relevant rendering complexity instead of polygon number. And we decided to try it out. With so much potential for mesh shader, we conceive it is the main, it will be the mainstream of the future of games. Why is it not currently working with regular compute draw in direct traditional methods? The simple draw call just doesn't work for us. It lacks the ability to process mesh in a coarser grain than a triangle, like mesh that culling. How does a mesh shader solve it? Mesh shaders can extend the scalability of the geometry stage, and it's very easy to integrate to the engine runtime. It has the ability to encapsulate, it's a fun word, isn't it? Encapsulate, don't get to use that too often. The culling procedure in any single API call, which omits tedious state and resource setup procedures as draw indirect requires. With mesh shaders, the culling algorithms we use can be used for great flexibility. For example, in the shadow pass, we don't have a depth information, so occlusion culling is simply ignored in the shader. Now, I actually have done quite a lot of work with mesh shaders with NVIDIA, so uh, they've provided me a lot of guidance and quotes for how mesh shaders work. So I'll try to remember to link that in the video description. However, uh, TLDR, I think that mesh shading is indeed a very, very important thing going forward with, well, PC gaming. And um, I'm extremely excited to see what actually happens with, you know, the, the next stage, the next evolution of geometry. And, you know, the PlayStation 5, the Xbox, the PC, they've all got this tech, not mesh shaders. The PlayStation doesn't use that. Of course, it relies on the geometry engine, which is uh, slightly off topic. But TLDR, they all kind of deal with next generation geometry in a very fine-grained manner. And they've got insane levels of control over the geometry process, the, the actual geometry pipeline. And, you know, I kind of remember when direct, you know, if you go back in the day, uh, when we were talking a lot about DirectX 12 and how, you know, low-level APIs like, uh, Man uh, Ma well, I guess it was Mantle back then, but then it started to transition to both Vulkan and DirectX 12, and how draw calls were like everything. Because obviously there were a lot of limitations with, like, let's say, DX11, and you it, it wasn't exactly the best for a ton of CPU calls, let's just be honest. And of course, at this point, we're well and truly transitioned to like uh, quad-core processors with multiple threads. But the issue was that you could only have like one or two threads easily be able to issue draw calls. And that was a really big limitation with PCs back in the day. And, you know, I kind of did uh, some testing on that. And I have to say that I do think that, you know, this is like the next barrier, right? To be able to actually have this level of control. I'm extremely excited to see what the future of gaming actually looks like in the next couple of years. But with that said, I think I've taken enough of your time and I've rambled. So... Thanks very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, of course, leave a like on the video because the YouTube algorithm and also subscribe to the channel, again, because YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.